Good morning. Another week, and sadly, we are back here talking about President Biden's failures and the crises that his administration is causing across America. Today, Rep. Davis is going to discuss the Democrats' partisan My Way or the Highway bill that's on the floor, and Representative Mike Gallagher will be discussing his resolution condemning the Chinese Communist Party for 100 years of gross violations of human rights. We must continue our efforts to hold the Chinese Communist Party accountable on the COVID-19 cover-up, on their human rights violations, on all of it. And we must stand with the Chinese people for freedom. Since Nancy Pelosi is unwilling to stand up to Chinese Communist Party, Republicans will lead and do so. Before I pass it over, I want to touch on two other important issues. President Biden has failed to secure our southern border. And this week, we have a group of House Republicans who are joining with President Trump visiting our border. Yet last week, while in Texas, Vice President Kamala Harris said they had made progress. This is absolutely false. May was the third straight month of 170,000 apprehensions, which hasn't occurred since 2000. CBP has seized more fentanyl so far in 2021 than all of 2020 combined. And it is because of the Biden administration's ending of successful Trump policies, like the Remain in Mexico policy, that we now have this border crisis continuing to grow today. In addition, President Biden has failed to protect Americans from the surge in violent crime, a true crime crisis that we are seeing across America. Just this past weekend, there was a 21-year-old Marine shot in broad daylight in Times Square. His family live in, lives in my district. He is originally from my district, so this impacts every community, urban, suburban, and rural. We need to secure our borders, secure our streets. The Democrats' defund the police rhetoric and policies are making that more difficult. I'm now going to turn it over to my colleague, Representative Mike Gallagher from Wisconsin. Uh, thank you. This Thursday marks the 100th anniversary of the founding of the Chinese Communist Party. Under the slogan of follow the party forever, General Secretary Xi Jinping is marking the occasion through a wave of propaganda and triumphalism, especially about the party's earliest days, rewriting history. Uh, they're hosting study sessions on party history. Theaters have been ordered to screen propaganda films at least twice a week. And in Wuhan, of all places, the party put on a giant light show where bri uh, buildings uh, are being and bridges are being lit up with the hammer and sickle. Uh, CCP officials have even set up a website where individuals can report on their neighbors and the, quote, historical nihilists who, quote, defame CCP heroes or deny the excellence of advanced socialist culture. Well, with an invitation like that and to assist General Secretary Xi Jinping in his commemoration of CCP history, I've introduced a resolution that details the dozens of crimes against humanity from across the last century of the party's history. The point here is to illustrate that the abuses we're seeing from the party today, including the genocide in Xinjiang, and think about the fact that we now have two successive administrations, one Republican, one Democrat, have certified that what is going on in Xinjiang province is a genocide. There's not much worse than a genocide. Um, this is not a new phenomenon. Human rights abuses are hardwired into the Chinese Communist Party's very DNA. So I'm thrilled to say we actually have strong bipartisan support for this resolution. Uh, thanks to uh, the work of, of my colleagues, Representative McCall, Representative Gallego, Gottheimer, Stefanik, Golden, and Fitzpatrick, we have a broad bipartisan group that is united in standing against the CCP's ongoing crimes against humanity. This is a message that all Americans should get behind, and I urge Speaker Pelosi to bring this resolution before the House this week and thereby allow us to send an unambiguous message that we do indeed deny the excellence of advanced socialist culture, and we can lay the CCP's true nature bare for all the world to see. Early in her career, Speaker Pelosi was a very forceful uh, uh, denouncer of the CCP's human rights abuses. In the aftermath of Tiananmen Square, she said, first, we saw the massacre, then we saw the masquerade. Well, I could not agree anymore. Let us help end the masquerade and speak the truth. I urge the speaker to bring this resolution to the House floor for a strong bipartisan vote. Thank you.
while the Democrats, as, uh, as Chair Stefanik mentioned, are allowing the border crisis to go unaccounted for and, and still seeing a surge of, of migrants coming across on a regular basis, while our cities are seeing an increasing amount of violent crimes and Democrats fail to hold China accountable, what they're doing is trying to pass what is their version of the My Way or the Highway Bill. It's a bill that was not put together with bipartisan support. And as most of you know, I'm ranked one of the most bipartisan members of Congress by the Luger Center. I became a member of the Transportation Infrastructure Committee because I wanted to work in a bipartisan way to get things done. But when you can't get the Democrats to even sit down and talk about common sense regulatory reform issues, like reducing the amount of time it takes for a project to go from an idea to actual construction, Democrats fail to care about taxpayer dollar efficiency. We all know the most popular issue that the Democrats have right now on their agenda is infrastructure. What the Democrats are trying to do today is ram through a partisan message that spends about one out of every two dollars on new Green Deal priorities. It doesn't address the major issues of what makes these projects take so long and cost so much. And they're failing to do it all while hoping that the American people will mistake this partisan bill with the bipartisan agreement in the Senate. It's unfortunate that Chairman DeFazio and Speaker Pelosi have decided to run this partisan bill at the same time we still do not see legislative text on this so-called infrastructure agreement. This partisan bill is going to continue. It's going to continue to waste taxpayer dollars. It's going to continue to fund Green New Deal priorities. And it's just a limited marker that will become political theater once they begin the reconciliation process, as we know Speaker Pelosi and Leader Schumer are going to force on the American people. Thank you. Yep, Scalise. Thank you, Rodney. First, let me express my prayers to all of those families who are grieving as they continue to try to recover bodies in the Miami building that collapsed last week. I, I have a family from my district in Kenner, Louisiana, that had reached out, uh, the mother whose daughter was in the building and actually was on the phone with her husband while the building was collapsing. And uh, these are heartbreaking stories. Uh, these families are grieving, so our prayers continue to be with them. Uh, here this week, uh, we're dealing with a number of crises, and yet on the floor, we don't see legislation that Speaker Pelosi is bringing to address any of them. Uh, as at least talked about, the border crisis continues to get worse. When Vice President Harris went to Texas, she didn't go to the border areas where the worst crossings are. I went to McCallum, Texas with many of my colleagues. Uh, she should have gone there. She should have gone to the Donna Detention Facility. But most importantly, she should be working with our Border Patrol agents who all will tell you what they need to do to solve this crisis. And frankly, it's all things that President Biden himself did to start creating this crisis at our border. They can solve it today. We call on them to do that. There is a crime crisis in our country as well. And interestingly, over the last year, Democrats have embraced the defund police movement, uh, and it's had detrimental results. It has had devastating results in so many cities across America where Democrat mayors participated in this defund the police movement. And we've seen, unfortunately, uh, police officers leaving the police force in record numbers. And what is the answer from Democrats to finally reject this radical idea of defunding the police? No, they're trying to blame Republicans now for the dumpster fire that they created. So we're going to continue to call them out on their extremist radical agenda that included defunding the police. And it's time for Democrats to admit that it was a failure when they embraced the defund police movement and start reversing it. Stop trying to blame other people. Actually own up to what you created that is causing out of control crime in our cities across America. And finally, on holding China accountable. For more than a year now, House Republicans have been calling on Speaker Pelosi to hold a hearing on the origins of COVID. It's perplexing that Speaker Pelosi refuses to have any committee of jurisdiction hold a hearing on the origin of a virus that's killed over 600,000 Americans and 4 million worldwide. And so with the, the mountains of evidence that continue to grow that show that it may have started in that lab in Wuhan, House Republicans decided that we're going to have our own hearing. And so today at noon, 
we're having a hearing on the origins of COVID. We have many respected scientists and others who have done research extensively into the origins of COVID. And we're going to be having that hearing. It's going to be uh, noon over in HVC 215. We invite everybody to come and learn about what we at least have on the table. And then ultimately, to continue to press Speaker Pelosi to have hearings where we can have subpoena powers to bring in others who refused to come testify. Nobody should be trying to cover up for the Chinese Communist Party, least of which should be Speaker Pelosi. The fact that the Senate passed a bill unanimously that actually will show some of the data and declassify some of the information that's out there passed unanimously in the Senate. Speaker Pelosi won't even take that up. So House Republicans are going to continue to press to get the answers, to get to the bottom of how this virus started. It's about time, long past time, that Democrats join in. With that, we'll be happy to take questions. Yes, sir. I wanted to know more about the Conservative Climate Caucus, whether the House Republicans are, are finally coming to the table on the topic after what seemed like a lot of reluctance to embrace the problem that scientists have identified. Where is that coming from? Uh, I think a few of the members on our side kicked that off. But one of the things we've seen uh, is as the Democrats have promoted things like the Green New Deal uh, and President Biden rejoined the Paris Accord, uh, all of these initiatives are things that exempt China. If carbon emissions are the real concern, why would you want to put policies in place in America that make it harder to make things in America and ship even more jobs to China which is the largest emitter of carbon. And so whether it's President Biden shutting down drilling, which a federal judge just overturned that order, he's made us less de more dependent on foreign oil. OPEC nations are gaining more leverage. Russia, uh, I, I, bizarrely, President Biden killed the Keystone Pipeline in America, citing climate, and yet he green-lighted the Nord Stream Pipeline between Russia and Germany. So clearly it's not fossil fuels or carbon that President Biden is concerned about. It's American jobs that he's blocking, and he's doing it at the expense of not only American workers, but at the expense of carbon, because more carbon's being emitted in those foreign countries because they don't have the standards we have. What I'm given to understand, though, is that this caucus has more to do with informing Republicans about the issue of climate change, not so much pointing out China's role in any of this. But you'll, have to, you'll have to ask members of the, the commission what their, so what their objective is. about whether this is a, a late coming to the table on the topic. No, in fact, Republicans have been leading for years on American dominance and the standards that we have. A lot of people like beating up on America. Frankly, if you look, whether it's making steel, steel's still going to be made in the world. So the question is, if you take the President Biden approach, it's going to be harder to make steel in America, which means it gets made in China or India, where they emit five times more carbon to make the same steel. If you want to reduce carbon emissions, you should make more things in America, not less, and stop killing America job, American jobs and stop benefiting countries like China and Russia. Yes. Yeah, so uh, on Speaker Pelosi's uh, January 6th uh, bill to create a committee, will, will the Republicans, uh, A, vote for that? And B, will they participate on that committee in any way, shape, or form? Well, ultimately, let's, let's see where the vote goes. But if you look at the last vote, uh, it was overwhelmingly opposed by Republicans. And what we've said is, look, there are a lot of standing committees that have jurisdiction. I think even the Senate is taking the approach of having some of their standing committees look into it. Uh, Speaker Pelosi ought to be exercising that same ability, uh, not going down a partisan route. And so... You know, we'll we'll see where the vote goes, but ultimately, the, the, they have the ability right now with standing committees. But on so many fronts, Speaker Pelosi is not using her standing committees to carry out the will of the American people. I just talked about holding China accountable. Not a single hearing by any standing committee, and there's at least five of them that could be having hearings today, including the select subcommittee on the coronavirus. Yet to have a single hearing on the origin of the coronavirus. Republicans are on that committee. Will Republicans be on Nancy Pelosi's committee? Um, I, I can't answer that question. Yes. Rip Scalise, I was wondering, what's the GOP message to voters besides Biden sort of done everything wrong regarding China, the, the border, crime? What, what's the message to voters besides being anti-Biden administration? Well, what Americans want to see and what Republicans want to see is to get our country back opened again, to get our schools back open again, to create jobs and stop paying people not to work, to get crime under control. Uh, you don't have to reinvent the wheel to figure that out. How can we secure America's border? Our border was actually more secure when President Biden took office. He took direct action to open up America's border, make it less secure. 
Uh, so again, if he didn't like uh, Donald Trump, at least acknowledge those policies were working to make our border more secure and go do those things that were working. We had a humming economy. Right now we're seeing rising inflation in part because of President Biden's actions. I wish he wasn't taking those actions. I wish we were talking about things we were doing to work together on things like a bipartisan infrastructure bill, but he gets an agreement with Republicans and Democrats on infrastructure, and then minutes later, he blows the whole thing up by cutting a side deal with Speaker Pelosi and Chuck Schumer, trying to appease the most radical elements of his base. So ultimately, what we want to see is let's work together to solve real problems uh, that our country is facing, uh, not continuing to see President Biden appease to the radical left. And that's all he's done in his administration these six months. And, and I'd like to see him work a lot closer with us to address real problems. Last question. Based on what you've seen of that bipartisan infrastructure deal and taking into account the president's walk back over the weekend on those comments about tying the two bills together, do you anticipate, uh, would you accept House Republican support for that bill or that proposal, I guess? It's not a We're bill not going to support any bill that raises taxes. And that was one of the red lines that we've drawn. I think Mitch McConnell has said similar things. But look, look at Sam Graves, for example. Sam Graves is the, the lead Republican of the Transportation Committee. He's worked with Chairman DeFazio on what, what most people would consider very bipartisan initiatives. In fact, the definition of infrastructure itself had always been bipartisan. And then Democrats tried to change it to include things like home health care workers being unionized. Most Americans would say that has nothing to do with infrastructure. And raising taxes, this week they're bringing a bill to the floor that has over $700 billion of spending, much of which has nothing to do with infrastructure, all unpaid for. Proposal. So on the bipartisan proposal, we still haven't seen details yet, as, uh, as Rodney Davis talked about. Uh, but the framework that we are hearing are things that many Republicans support, uh, whether it's the traditional infrastructure, roads, bridges, ports, waterways, and broadband, using some of the existing funds that are unspent uh, from previous relief bills. There's hundreds of billions of dollars of money that's been unspent, uh, and many, both on the Senate and House side, have identified those funds as a way to start paying for it. You've got to look at how to pay for it, uh, and not in a way that raises taxes and kills American jobs. So those are the things that we've been for from the beginning. Sam Graves laid that out in the bill that he uh, that he unveiled. Uh, hopefully, as we see more details from the bipartisan group of senators, we also see President Biden very clearly drop this hostage demand that unless you also have a reconciliation bill that raises taxes and spends four or five trillions of dollars of additional Washington spending, let's get back to the bipartisan approach. Thanks, well, thank you all. We'll see thank you at the uh, hearing at, at noon.